Uh, good morning everyone, hope you're doing okay today. Uh, welcome to today's stay at home art club. Uh, this morning I woke up and I saw a nice squirrel in the tree outside and that tree had lots of nice buds on it. Um, and that really reminded me of one of Van Gogh's paintings, oh such an artist, um, which is Almond Blossom, which is a really famous one, um, which is currently available online. You can visit a lot of great art museums at the moment virtually ooh, using the internet and you can click up real close, it's almost like you can touch them, which you can't do in real life. So I've put the link in the below description bit of this video and if you click on that, that'll take you straight to a virtual tour of the painting um, I was talking about. So um, if you've got the time, go and have a wee peruse around there. Um, and I'm also going to put in some links for some other art museums you can explore virtually. So hopefully, hopefully you've just taken a little virtual tour of the Van Gogh Museum. Um, and now I'm going to show you some other kind of tree-like images that are quite nice, starting with Mad Squirrel in his tree. Um, and also some Japanese woodcut prints because a lot of that is what inspired um, Van Gogh's artwork. So you can have a wee peruse of those um, before I tell you what today's project's gonna be. So hopefully you enjoyed looking at those pictures and um, there's quite a nice variety there. There were some that were simple, some that are just branches, maybe some birds and flowers, some that are kind of more the whole tree sort of thing. So you can have a have a think about which of those you like the best. And um, today we're going to be doing a kind of woodblock inspired um, tree image just to celebrate the fact that the buds are appearing the flowers are appearing, the springtime's almost here um, and hopefully you can see some of that out your window. So as ever we're going to be doing yeah, a pencil or a pen version and also a colour version which could be colour pencil, watercolour or paint, whatever takes your fancy. Step number one, we're going to decide what sort of shape we want our composition to be in. I've gone for a circle, so I used a plate, drew around it, and whoa, wasn't it that? Oh, I'm so clumsy. Um, the I lost my train of thought. Yep, so you could do another shape, it doesn't need to be a circle. You could go for a book, uh, which might be a nice rectangle. If you've got a square book, draw in that. You could draw your own wiggly shape, that could be quite fun. Um, just go for whatever whatever you like. Maybe leave a gap at the bottom. And so I'm thinking maybe we'll write something here, maybe something a bit uplifting. Okay, so find yourself a object to draw around and draw around it. Alright, so hopefully you've drawn your nice shape. And we're now gonna think about what sort of tree we want to have in here. Um, as ever, I'm going to be drawing in a very thick pencil, so you want to be drawing much lighter than I am. I'm just doing it really thick so you guys can see. Um, so, I think I'm going to do my trill, trill, trill tree with a squirrel in it. Um, so I'm going to be going for quite central branches coming up from the bottom of my circle. Coming up this way. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, what a tease. So that's what I've gone for. Um, oh, maybe I'm gonna go a bit higher, taking it right up to the top. If you were gonna be going for something like Van Gogh's tree branches, you'd be doing a similar thing from the bottom. Maybe just going a bit more crookedy looking at the shapes that he's got there and you could also be doing a nice side one with some branches coming in or even one coming down from the top like some of those Japanese pictures 
So have a wee flick back, rewind, see which ones you like the best and try one of those. So now you've got your main branches in, now we're going to draw the ones that are splintering off. Um, so I don't know if you remember that from the first video we did, uh, but they're going to be coming off, going up the way generally, and they're not coming off across from each other really. Actually, on my tree they are, just looking, oh, weird, found a tree that does that, but you generally want them to be not going like that, that looks a bit strange, so you're going out an angle and up, okay, and just filling out your picture. So I've put in all my branchy off branches and now what we're going to do is we're going to thicken up the main ones just to make sure that we've got them a nice difference in line weight so they're going to be thicker at the bottom we're doing our joins again where we're joining in the bases of the main branches and they're going to be thicker at the bottom getting thinner as we go up so just filling that in there in there, making sure this one's nice and joined in. So we're generally thickening the bottom of each of your really big branches. If you're looking at the Van Gogh one, it's quite clear which ones are really thick and really thin, so just make sure you're paying attention to that. They say that drawing is 80% looking, okay? So it's all about noticing what's there and getting it down on the page. Okay, I think I've got a lot more realistic looking tree now because it actually looks like these bottom branches could support the top branches, which is pretty important if it's not going to fall over. I should also mention if you're doing one where the branches are coming down the way, the reverse is going to be true. You're going to be thickening up the ones at the top and they'll be getting thinner coming down. Okay. So it's background time, if you're doing a pencil version you can do something like this just with your pencil using your pencil on its side and doing kind of different pressures so you can do it start really really light and you can build up darker and darker and darker. That's if you want a background, you don't actually need to put a background in but if you want a kind of a misty cloudy look that can be really nice. I've been using colour pencil and I've decided to put some clouds in, which is quite nice. You could do clouds if you want, you could do a sunset if you're thinking of blending some different colours together, or you could do, um, there's one in there with a moon, which I really like, in which case you'd leave a circle somewhere where you want your moon to be and you wouldn't colour that. I've gone for some clouds and I've been using three different colour pencils. So initially I just shaded over really softly with this blue um, all over here just like that kind of using the pencil on its side and just trying to get a really soft soft look and one side I'd done most of that I then went in with my other colours and up to about here I did a second light coat with a darker blue just to give it a bit of a, a soft gradient and then after that I went in with this kind of this kind of a greyish blue and I just did that down this little bottom bit down here just to really darken up kind of introduce a different colour but you could do that with any colours if you don't have three blues you can do blue with maybe a touch of red or purple or even pink um, and like I said if you were doing a sunset you'd go for yellow, orange and red, yellow, orange and pink and you're just doing the same thing so you go 
maybe yellow all over, then work in some oranges, and then just do a little bit of red at the bottom. But you're going to be doing pencil shading on the side. And then lastly, if you're going for watercolour, you just want to make sure you're doing mostly water. So the, the key to watercolour is water. It's in the name. You want to put out a, a pea-sized blob of watercolour if you've got the tubes, or if on the palette you just want to mix up really watery, um, so you want it to look like thin diluting juice, and wash it over your picture. Um, and anywhere you want to leave white, you need to leave white. Um, the white is your paper. You don't want to be using your white watercolour because it looks quite chalky and you won't get the same sort of effect. So now hopefully you've got your lovely background done um, and now we're going to think about what we want to see on our tree. I'm going to go for some little spring buds and a squirrel um, but I'll also talk you through if you want any birds or some blossom like Van Gogh's one okay. So getting started for my buds, my buds are coming in threes and I'm just going to draw them in like that, just coming off off my tree. You can choose to colour them in. I'm going to keep mine black and white because I think that's what looks best in silhouette. But I could also choose to draw them in in green if I was going to go for that. So here's a little close up of them. I've just, they're literally just little circles. They're pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, and I'd be putting them at the tip of each of my branches. And then it'll start to look like a bursting forth. Okay. Um, all right. If you were going to be doing blossom, I'm going to show you the shape you'd be drawing a bit bigger down here. So in Van Gogh's one, he's got quite loose textured. So you're going for kind of roughly teardrop shapes and they can be kind of overlapping a bit. And I think the maximum you want to draw on each one is about four and they can have less. So there's your kind of vague blossom shape and you'd have a few of these dotted around and um, mostly on the ends of branches um, so I'd be doing some that have got four, some that have maybe got two, like that. And then I'd also be doing with some that are like this, like a leaf with a line through it, and those will be like the ones that aren't open yet. So I'm going to continue putting on my little buds. And you're going to have a go at doing whatever you'd like to add on. But I forgot. In some of the japanese -y ones, um, the blossom's got a bit more detail in it. And the way they draw them is kind of like a bit of popcorn. Or a really round cloud. That sort of shape. Or a skip. If anyone remembers skip crisps. They were horrible. I hated those. Um, but the shape is good for this. They've then got a circle in the middle and lines from the outside like that. Yeah? And then they shade in here with a bit of light pink just round where your lines are. And that's a little bit of pink in there. So if you want in quite a Japanesey style blossom, that's how you do it. It's squirrel time! So, if you want to draw in a little squirrel sitting in your tree, um, that's how you do it. So, we're going to start with an oval. And then another oval on the top. Two pointed ears. One of them joins into the head. So that's what we've got so far. Maybe give them a little nose. 
and then we've got a tail coming off the bottom sweeping round like that some little hairs coming off it now you might think that doesn't look that much like a squirrel and it doesn't when you draw it that big but when you're drawing it little and tiny on your tree and colour it in all dark it looks great so I'll show you how you do that on a micro version high tech so my tree here I'm gonna have him sitting on this branch so I'm gonna draw in my little little back get that coloured in nice and dark then I'm gonna add in his little head pointy ears and then last but not least his little tail coming down with a nice fluffy edge and it's kind of fluffy on both sides there we go there's my little squirrel in my tree the next bit is if you want a little birdie in your tree okay so i'm gonna copy the one the green ones um out of that japanese picture and um, so we're going to start with a beak shape like that little point that's then going to round into quite a shallow head like that i'm going to pop my eye in at the end of my beak just so I know where I'm going. So that's a circle with a little circle inside it. Like that. That's then gonna round into quite a big belly. So I've got a belly coming down here, coming back up. Nice. Then my head is going back and turning into a wing. A little kind of love hearty shape on the end nice and then we're gonna square both of those off into a tail which is quite long with a scalloped edge bring that up a bit more it's my general little bird shape give us more of an idea of what he's looking like we're going to take a line round here which is going to be between his wing and his underbelly so that's round from his head scooping down and then up finishing off as another wing and then we've got little feet heading onto his branch so for his feet you can kind of just do sticks because you can never really see the actual feet but if you want to do feet you can draw kind of a little semicircle with a line in the middle gripping onto the branch so that's your birdie shape you can put in some more definition for the wings if you want but you're going to be drawing quite small so i wouldn't i wouldn't bother with that to be honest um, bird pose number two we're going to do is one kind of looking over its shoulder and um, so we're going to start with again with the beak little triangle and then i'm going to pop its eye in as well because i find that really helps me getting the spacing on the head so again i've got a circle within a circle just below it gonna widen out and create my head so I've got a line coming down from the beak curving round and then another line coming out and round that's gonna create the main shape of my bird so I'm gonna scoop that round making a big C so we've got that at the moment then going to use the other side to create a bit of a shoulder that 
It's then scooping round to join the other one. Yeah. And then we're going to widen that out into a tail. The tail kind of dips in a little bit and then flares out again. And we're going to have that scalloped edge. So that just means putting a wee, a wee divot in the middle. And then we're going to add in our finishing touches, which are a bit of wing poking out there. And a bit of belly under there. And last but not least, a little wig joining onto our branch. So I've put my little semicircle at the end there. Bit of a throat colour. Okie dokie. So you can colour, just block colour these all in, um, like if they're, they're a silhouette. Or if you're using just a pencil, you can do your different shades. So you can do some bits dark and some bits light. And then if you've got your colour pencils or your paint, just get them, splash some nice colour on there. It doesn't really, they're going to be quite small. So splash some colour on, don't worry too much about detail. Uh, a general feel of the shape will be enough. Last but not least, we're going to add some text at the bottom, if you fancy. Um, I've gone for spring super inspired you know um, and what I like to do to make sure I'm getting text and um, the right sort of size is I do a line along the bottom and I do a line along the top for how big I want to be I didn't use a ruler for this I just used a tin and try and make it sure it's kind of parallel to the bottom mine's slightly squinty but I don't mind um, and then I like to start with my middle letter unfortunately spring doesn't have a middle letter because it's a six letter word but I started with my I and my R and then worked my way out and then that makes sure that it's centred. So what I'm going to do just now is I'm just going to thicken up my text. Um, so I've got it outlined at the moment. If I was wanting to make it thicker, I just widen it out a little bit at each bit and then draw lines to thicken it up. We're just making it into block lettering, really. Like that. And I'm going to do that for each one. Then I'm going to colour it in with my chosen colour scheme. Um, you might have noticed I've added a colourful circle around the edge there. I've gone for green and red. And so I think that looks quite nice. This is one of my favourite colour combos at the moment. A bit like a rhubarb and custard sweetie. Um, so I'm probably going to keep those colours going there. You can make your border big and thick and black. You can make it in a pattern. You can add little zigzags or something. Or you can rub it out completely and then have it look like you've got a nice floating window to the outside. Um, that can be lovely. Um, Alright, so you guys have a go at that. You can do any of the pictures that I posted at the beginning. And you can do your own version of the Van Gogh if you like. All these tips are applicable to that. Um, and you can do that as a full page picture or you can do it in one of these shapes um, like I've done. And I hope you have fun with it.
Um, I hope everyone's feeling all right at home. Um, I've got a little thing I saw on the internet coming up next, which um, I found really helpful. Um, if I start to feel a bit <gasps> about being at home. Um, so here it is. Now we're going to end with a joke. What which can jump higher, a kangaroo or a skyscraper? A kangaroo, of course. Skyscrapers can't jump. Good one. Uh, I think so. Um, okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, stay safe. Um, try and enjoy yourself and wash your hands.